Hello everyone. Welcome to my studio. My name is Kurt Rugel and I have a passion for drawing. But who said you can only draw one way? There is only one way to draw and that is your way. So this is the way I draw. Um, this drawing comes from this photograph. So if you really look at it closely, you'll start seeing what I'm talking about. I want to talk about drawing as a form of expressing yourself. Now, the thing I enjoy the most is drawing the human figure, female or male. Life drawing comes into that. I attend a life drawing class every Tuesday night down at the local art school. What I found though over time is that working from life, if you can afford it, <laughs> a model is one thing, but working from photographs um, can be something that you can accomplish very much. Now, working from a photograph, people will say, you just trace that photograph. And then what I did is after I traced the photograph, I copied it out on this like paper. This is, and then worked color pencils over the top of it. What I'm gonna show you is really what I do when it comes to drawing. I'm gonna be going from a female figure to a male figure today. So for the next three days today, Thursday and Saturday, I'm going to be exploring the male form. Now, what I'm going to show you is number one in what gets me into a drawing. So, what gets me into a drawing is chance and surprise. It would be very simple to put a piece of paper over the top of this, start tracing, da 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 da. da. But I want something else. I want there to be a reaction, a reaction between myself, the drawing, which would then cause a story. And this is how I do it. So what this blank piece of paper is on is another photograph. And then that, these two pieces of paper are on a light table or a light box that I've had since high school. Now what you see is a skeleton. Now, this is what I do. You'll be able to see here in a second. I'm just gonna kind of do a sketch here. Okay, so I'm going to turn the light box off in a moment, and we are both going to be surprised. <laughs> so, I'm feeling pretty good. Here we go. Now, I have a really good understanding for human anatomy, but more importantly, working from life. Life drawing, I think, has always been the key to uh, improving. Um, and it's not only just going down to an art school and um, standing there in front of uh, live nude models, male and female. Um, this is also going out into uh, you know, public situations and drawing, you know, taking a sketchbook and drawing figures and, uh, or just the buildings or trees or going out into the park and so on and so forth. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to bring the light back box back on.
and I'll start working from there. So that's all I did was print out. Um, I found a skeleton online. It's 11 by 17. I have an oversized printer. So um, all my photographs, matter of fact, this is off to the side. This is one of this is from one of my absolute favorite anatomy books uh, uh, by David K. Rubens. I, I got in college. I still have it. So um, it's very plain, anatomically structured, easy to kind of use as a reference and bounce from. Um, but it's all in the same vein of taking a photograph of somebody who's going to play a character out and uh, it's my responsibility to uh, translate what is being uh, acted out um, and then presented to me in physical form so I can have a, uh, a uh, character drawing something for people to to enjoy mm. you also you will see I don't get too detailed from back here it looks very detailed but when you really kind of get up there it's kind of just more and more specific scribbles <laughs> so I'm taking it once again back to uh, getting into color pencils which one of the major reasons I love color pencils is because it keeps me drawing All right, so now I want to take you into step two of my drawing process, having just completed step one, which is uh, scribbling, doing a lot of scribbling. Um, this is just getting the intention out. Um, we did it with a lot of uh, surprise and chance. So there's a lot of information here. Um, so with the smudging and erasing, what I'm going to do is use a chamois, which is a piece of uh, sheep cloth. Uh, this side, as you can see, is very dirty. Um, and lightly just start smudging the figure. This will blur down the majority of lines. And then we'll start choosing what's more appropriate line wise so there are no mistakes in art in drawing um, what I'm going to be erasing is information I no longer need um, so I'm going to be using an electric eraser um, I'm going to show you very quickly up around the head what I'm going to be erasing and then I'm going to move into a uh, speed drawing mode so you don't have to listen to the eraser um, buzzing along so much and then I'll get this first layer of erasing done. Um, one thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a light source coming from this direction so light will be hitting the entire body from here and this will be in shadow. So with that being said and I'm drawing with this eraser so, this is one of my favorite parts of drawing. Now one of the things is that it's going from a bit of darkness to some light, which I just erased, back to do some darkness. And then I'm going to actually, behind the figure, erase everything from here, but still keep it dark because I want that darkness and lightness to come in. And it will help me in my values so which will be coming up next so I'm going to turn over to speed drawing mode I'm just going to move into a, an eraser um, pencil. So this is an entire piece of eraser. And we're going to get into just sort of calming down 
some of the starkness between what had been drawn, smudged, and then the electric eraser. So, keeping the character anonymous, so not worried about details. I'm just removing any information I just no longer need. So there's no mistakes in art, none whatsoever. Hence, taking chances for surprises, taking those surprises, and then just working with them. And letting yourself explore what it is that you do know and what you don't know. I was taught that the more lines you can get down in the beginning of your process, uh, the more information you have, the more information you get rid of. So, with that being said, it's really all about um, just giving yourself the time and patience with yourself to just draw. I'm not without reference. So as an anatomical drawing right now, it is. This was the skeleton. Put it on a light box. Started scribbling, now erasing on top of it. Um, I'm using reference. This is from my favorite, uh, my favorite anatomy book. It's by David K. Rubens. So I'm using this, it's off to the side. I can peek out and uh, look for references. So as I said before, there's a light's hitting here. I'm gonna keep it darker over here so it looks more like light. And then the darkness on the other side of the lightness, and that's where this cross hatching comes into. It would get very dark along here, a little lighter, and then into the light again. So value, grayscale, and how to make the transition from black to white. The white of the paper, the black of the pencil. I use a method which is I'll make one pass and get lighter to nothing, and then I will crosshatch. And repeat to nothing. Very much about pressure. I can do it again. Really dark. Let it go. Light. And that cross hatching will get me to value and a proper grayscale from black to white. Today we're going to get into the thing we all love the most when it gets down to drawing, which is details. Details, just like the fixtures on a house or icing on a cake, just don't you do that well um, if there's not a proper foundation. This is a proper foundation. Um, this was done on Tuesday. Thursday we then spent some time doing a... Um, smudging and erasing and that's where this leaves us so today we're going to be able to just play around and outfit our character it's a male character and as well as having a uh, a good understanding for anatomy i do have an anatomical reference and i have been referring to my favorite anatomy book which is by David K. Rubens, and it's just called The Human Figure. 
You can get these on uh, Amazon for less than 10 bucks. So, and it's really, really well plotted out for anatomy. A lot of really good basic. Uh, so I'm going to be outfitting this character to a character I have been working on for several years named Crumb the Barbarian. A Conan version, um, skinnier, blonder, um, but all the same in the sword and sorcery genre. Um, so I'm going to use this fully developed rendering to now outfit him. Give him a costume basically, some hair, I'm going to work on some hair, some costume, um, shield, and sword. Thursday, we went over smudge and erasing. This is a chamois. What the chamois is, is just a piece of uh, lambskin. It's very dirty. I've been, had it for many years. And I'm going to smudge lightly again over the top of this drawing. This is going to afford me the ability to draw over the top of this drawing. Kind of losing some of the stuff I don't need any longer, but still having access to stuff I do want. But this time, instead of drawing with a pencil, I'm going to be drawing with an eraser. I'm going to start right out on him. Now the face, I'm going to give him some hair real quick. He has long blonde hair. Now, the face is pretty generic, and it's my uh, responsibility now to give him a little bit more of the crumb look. Of course, being my character, I understand what that character needs in order to look more like himself. Now, what's happening is because of the smudging, I'm able to sort of bring back some highlights, get rid of some of the stuff I don't need anymore, but more importantly, I'm going to start right with the belt. Let's see, instead of drawing a straight line across, I'm actually going to draw a curved line. So already you can start seeing it helps keep the volume of the character more realistic or naturalistic. He's got wristbands. He's got wristbands, once again, same thing. I'm actually boots. And they kind of have this lacing, this Viking kind of lacing going on. Keeping everything in a curve. I've seen it's been a tendency for people when they start getting into details. And one of the reasons why drawing immediately with details, things don't look correct is because they are flat, too flat. And he just has a loincloth, which I'm just going to scribble away. Just a piece of leather. But without having established some scribbling, some smudging erasing, which was the form and structure of the drawing, this part just ends up being a whole lot more dynamic. Now for like here to hair, it's just not enough smudging.
when I drew out, I drew out with this Stadler, which is an HB2, which is a bit softer in lead, which when I smudge, there's still some good hints of lines there, but they don't go away completely. But at this point, this is too um, uh, soft. So what I'm going to move to is a good old Ticonderoga number two. It's also an HB, which I find to be funnier um, in comparison between the pencils. But the lead stays a bit more sharper. Now, you look at the face, this here. There's just a lot of information I can then make decisions about. Where the hair moves over the head, and around the ear, down by the chin, in front of the eyebrows, around the eyebrows. There's a ton of information that I can now work from in order to make and secure more detail of my character. Yes, I've drawn cartoons, I've drawn animations, I've drawn comic books. I've drawn people, I've drawn people's pets, I've drawn houses, I've drawn, I've drawn, I've drawn. And every time I draw, I draw with these four simple steps. And everybody gives me the same response. Oh my gosh, there's so much details. And this is all fundamental stuff to help people get the ideas that they have in their head out on a piece of paper and working for them. I know I get very frustrated if the ideas stay in my head. So, all right, we've come to the end of the 20 minutes. I really appreciate everybody stopping by and uh, joining me in my studio today. I'll be back next Tuesday.